All right, so the lesson today is the last lesson of this unit. I'm hoping we can finish the notes today. Um, so that way tomorrow, I mean, so far from my classes, it seems that tomorrow is going to be spent practicing a little bit, doing an exit ticket, and then, be, I don't know, I don't know if it's going to be a Kahoot or the review sheet. It just depends how much time we have. So either way, if we don't do the Kahoot tomorrow, we'll do it on Monday or the review sheet, depending on what we pick. Um, but we're preparing for the topic six test, which is on Tuesday. So just keep that in mind. The goal for today's lesson is to be able to perform function operations. So we've been doing a bunch of operations with polynomials. Now it's going to be in function notation. So we're just going to remember what function notation tells us to do. With it, we're going to like add, subtract, multiply, divide polynomial expressions written in function notation, and then create a new function by combining two different functions. I am recording now and I'll link it here in the slides, but there's other videos from last year if you want to check those out too. And the practice for this is going to be a puzzle piece. So there's two puzzle pieces. One, it says practice. The other one says exit ticket. So the practice you get two attempts on automatically. If I, if you want more attempts, you can always ask and I'll usually say yes, unless I think you're guessing. If you're turning it in in 30 seconds and you want another attempt, then no, I won't give it to you. But if it looks like you're trying, then yeah, I'll give you that attempt. So that I don't want to give you like a ton of time for, but it looks like tomorrow's last time we might spend like 15 minutes on it. I don't know. We'll have to see. But you'll have some practice on a puzzle piece. And then you'll take your exit ticket probably like in the middle of class tomorrow. And then the rest of the time will be just review. So that's the plan. Also reminding you that tomorrow's a deadline for late work. So make sure you're like checking the grades tab in Schoology. Anything marked missing, if you have it, you know, upload it so that way um, it gets updated. Questions at all? So even if you don't really know what assignment it's, is listed, you can click on the assignment link directly from the grades tab in Schoology and look at the file that's uploaded there. It's usually under the rubric and you get to see what it looks like. You can do it on your own paper. So that is due tomorrow unless you have some sort of special circumstance. All right, but make sure you have this paper in front of you. It's on the back table if you don't. And we're starting off with function notation. So that should be familiar to you unless you were in my class last semester. And function notation is that f of x stuff. So they'll give you an equation like in number one, f of x equals x squared minus x. And then they'll say find f of 5. So what are we doing with that 5? We're plugging it in square for the x. So that's what fills this space. So evaluate a function for a specific value by substituting the value in for x. Right? Because the 5 in the first one would replace where the x normally goes. And then in part b, the negative 1 replaces where the x normally goes. So we'll do the part A together. So if it's f of 5, 5 replaces x, anywhere that there's an x in the given equation. So it becomes 5 squared minus 5. Anytime that you plug stuff in, you should always use parentheses because sometimes it makes a difference, like distributing and all that stuff. So if you weren't here last semester, you know that the left, or sorry, then you might not know that the left side is just notation. It's not f times five or anything. It's just telling me that five is my input. 
So the right side of the equal sign is, will simplify and that'll basically be the output. So you simplify it according to order of operation. So what's five squared? Good. And then minus five gives me what? 20. So my input for this one is five. My output is 20. Good on that one. All right, we'll look at number two right now. So like g of x equals 3x minus 8, and it says find g of 1. So what is the one replacing? The x, because it's normally g of x. Um, so now it's g of 1. So it becomes 3 times 1 minus 8. Again, when you plug stuff in, use parentheses. The left side is just notation, just showing me that I plugged in one. The right side, we simplify with order of operations. So what's three times one? And then minus eight gives me good. And that's all we're really doing. I would do three with you, like that's a completely doable problem, but just for time's sake, I'll just skip through. All right, I want you guys right now to try the part B's in one and two. So you guys try part B in number one and two. So as we discussed, function notation. Um, you're usually given an equation and it'll say find f of negative one. So it replaces the x, whatever number they tell you. Um, so that's what it should look like plugged in. You should have had negative one squared minus negative one. And anytime you plug something, you use parentheses. So what's negative one squared? A positive one is correct. And then it's minus a negative one. You can put that in your calculator. Or you can just remember like what happens with the double negative. Or you can, it becomes a positive. You can remember that all subtraction problems, you have to add the opposite. So one minus negative one is two. Or in other words, one plus a positive one is two. So that's our answer for B. Questions about that one? All right, and then number two, it gives us a different equation. It gives us G of X. Um, and this time we're plugging in a negative three. This is what it looks like plugged in. So simplify using order of operations. Um, and again, you wanna use parentheses because if you didn't, Maybe you would have put that it's three minus three, which is not. It's three times negative three, which what's three times negative three? Good, and then minus eight. Negative 17 is correct. Questions on those you tries, good? Everyone remember function notation now? All right, so with this unit, we're just kind of changing it slightly. So now it's going to look like this, where maybe it's f plus g of x, or f minus g of x, or f times g of x. You can also do f divided by g of x. After the run. You can also do f times g of x, or sorry, f divided G by g of x, and then you would be dividing them. But all you're really doing is taking like the function of f of x and adding it to the function of g of x. So whatever it says to do between the letters is what you're doing between the two functions. All right, so if it gives you just an x, then your answer will be an expression. It'll have an x in it. If it gives you a number, then your final answer will be a number. So 
you're basically evaluating each function separately and then performing the indicated operation with the output. All right, so we'll try these together. So we're given that f of x equals x plus one and that g of x equals 3x minus 2. And we need to find f plus g of x. So that, that means I'm going to take what f of x equals, which is x plus 1. And when I plug it in, I put it in parentheses. And I'm going to add it to, because in the first line it's adding, I'm going to add it to what g of x equals, which is 3x minus 2. And again, since we're plugging stuff in, we use parentheses. All right, and then we would simplify. But before I do that, let's look at the next one. So what operation are we doing in the next one? So I'm going to take what f of x equals, which is x plus 1. And then I'm going to subtract what g of x equals, which is 3x minus 2. All right, and you can see why the parentheses are important when we start simplifying. Because what number is always outside the parentheses, even if it's not written? A 1. So like, if I distribute the positive one, it doesn't really change anything, right? So when we're adding, it doesn't really change much. It becomes x plus 1 plus 3x minus 2. So it gets rid of the parentheses. But in the subtraction one, I have a positive 1 outside the first set. So x plus 1. And what, do, what number do I have outside the second set? A negative one. So when you're distributing a negative one, that changes the signs. Because what's negative one times 3x? And negative one times negative two. So that's why the parentheses are important. Um, your final answer you'll want to be in simplest form. So like, do I have any like terms that I can combine? Like the x and the 3x, can I combine those? What do I get when I combine them? And then any constants you can always combine. So like 1 and negative 2, what do I get when I combine them? Negative 1, good. So my answer for what f plus g of x equals ends up being 4x minus 1. So we're just adding the functions together. Make sense? All right, so let's simplify this one. So combine like terms in this one. Um, what's x minus 3x? Good, negative 2x. And 1 plus 2? A positive 3. So then when we subtract, we do the f minus g of x, we get negative 2x plus 3. Right. And then you can also do it with like multiplication and division. So if I was doing this one down here, the f times g of x, we're taking the function of f of x, which we said is x plus 1. And times it by the function of g of x, which is 3x minus 2. And then you would simplify. I don't want to like take up all the time simplifying it since you know I feel like you guys get the point. But I just want you to be aware like if it says times and you're multiplying them. If it says dividing then you're dividing them. All right. Um, so that's what your answer would be if it gives you like f plus g of x. Sometimes, and I have seen this on your test too, 
Sometimes they give you the X, sometimes they give you a number like two. And then your final answer ends up being the number. So what you could do is go through all this work. And since F plus G of X is four X minus one, you could just plug in the two for the X. So it's four times two and then minus one. So then F plus G of two would be seven because we're plugging in the two for the X. Just like normal function notation. But what you can also do if it gives you a number, which I think sometimes is better than doing all of this scratch work, is if it gave me a number, well, I plug it into F, so what's two plus one? And then I plug it into G, what's three times two? And then minus two. So I get three plus four, which is seven. So it's up to you. If they give you a number, great. You can plug it in, solve them separately, and then just add them together if they want you to add them or subtract them. Um, or if it gives you an X, then yeah, you have to go through all this work and simplify. So questions on this side of the paper. All right. Normally I'd give you some to try on this one, but I think I'll save it for your practice because um, I want to show you something else too today. So flip to the back side. Um, leave this space open up here in case we do some new tries for the, for the front page. Um, but on this big white box, I'm going to have you write something down. All right, and this is going to be basically F of G of X versus G of F of X. So this is the other thing we need to learn, which is a function within a function. So write that down. F brackets, G of X, close bracket versus G brackets F of X. All right, so these are our functions within another function. So I'm going to be given some functions and gonna to be told to plug in maybe G of X into F of X or vice versa. So the way that I learned it best, my math teacher called it like fog and fog. All right, so we'll write that underneath. So this one would be fog because it's red F of G of X. And this one would be golf because it's G of F of X. And it's always the last letter going into the first letter. So I would always like draw that on my test and it just made sense. The last letter going into the first letter because it's G of X going into F of X. It's like inside it. And then F of X going into G of X. So if I'm given an example and I'll just write it right here and you guys write it too. So let's say in this example, we are given f of x equals 3x and g of x equals x plus 2. And then we're told to find f of g of x and then to find the G of F of X. All right, so if it's in that format with the brackets, a function within a function, then you use your fog and goth. 
So like F of G, that one is the fog one. So is that F going into G or G going into F? G going into F. So what G equals is given to us up here. It's X plus two. So I'm gonna kind of write it here on the G side. And then what F equals is three X. I'm gonna write it on the F side. And because it's F of G of X, it's G going into F. That means we're taking what G equals, which is this, and we're gonna plug it in for X in the F function. So it's gonna replace this X. And our f of g of x function ends up looking like this. It ends up being three parentheses, plug in what was g, x plus two. And then we would simplify, which we will simplify but in a little bit. So questions, do you see how it's g plugged into f? All right, and then on the other side, this one's got. So is it G going into F or F going into G? So we take what F equals, which is 3X. I put it on the F side. And then I take what G equals, which is X plus 2. And this time it's the F plugged into the X on the G. So it's going to replace this X. All right, so G of F of X ends up looking like this, where in parentheses, we put what F was, and then the rest of what G is. So again, you see how this is just plugged into X on the other one. All right, and then you simplify. So like, how would I simplify the F of G of X? What would I do over here? So if I was simplifying this, what would I do? You distribute what three times X? and three times two. And can it get simpler than that? No, so that's my F of G of X. So I box that up, I'm done there. Um, over here, we need to simplify this. What's the number outside parentheses if it's not written? So we distribute a positive one, which doesn't really change anything. What's one times three X? and then bring down that plus two. Can this one get any simpler? So then we're done there. All right, so basically the trick here is just being able to plug a function into a function. All right, this one, I will have you do a U try because these are a little harder for students to understand. Um, so I have it typed up here. It's not typed up on your paper, so you'll have to copy it over. So it says given f of x equals x plus seven and g of x equals four x, find f of g of x and g of f of x. We're always given two functions and then it might say find f of g of x, it might say find g of f of x. So f of g of x, is this fog or is it got? Fog, because it's red, f of g. And is it f going into g or g going into f? Good, so I always do this out and I just always remember it was the last letter going into the first one. So what does the g of x equal? 4x, so usually I'll write it here. And what does the f of x equal? And so I'll write that over here. And this little picture helps me remember that it's the 
G going into X on the F. That's what it'll replace. So then when I'm writing this in parentheses, it's what I plugged in for X. And then outside is whatever remains in the F of X. So plus seven. All right, so questions about that so far? All right, this one's the F of G of X. From there, you would simplify. So what's outside the parentheses if it's not written? A one, and this time it's positive. So what's one times four X? I get four X plus seven. Can I get any simpler than that? All right, so then we're done with that one. All right, now on to the next one. So G of F of X. This one's Goff. So is it G going into F or F going into G? Good, and F we said equals what? And G equals what? 4X. And this time it's F, so all of F being plugged into the X in the G of X. And then rewriting it. So when it's G of F of X, like that, um, outside was a four, and then we plugged in the F of X, so it was X plus seven in parentheses. We see how we just plugged in X into G. Questions about that? All right, and then we simplify. So how do I simplify this? Distribute, what's four times X? And what's four times seven? 28. And then I can't go any simpler than that unless they give me a number for the X. So then I'm finished. All right, I know for these ones, if it did give you a number, which I know you do have a problem like that on your test where it gives you a number, you could either solve it out first. And then if it said like F of G of four, then you plug in a four for the X. So in this one, it would be four times four plus seven. Which what's four times four plus seven? So four times four is 16. Plus seven would be what? Sixteen plus seven is twenty-three. If I had that number initially, like f of g of four, I could also choose to plug in the four into here, which is g of x being plugged into f if it's f of g. Um, so four times four is 16. And then when you plug it in for X on the other one, you get 16 plus seven, which is the same thing we did down here. So if you wanna solve it out first, when they give you a number, that's your choice, or you can simplify it and then plug in the number for X at the end. All right, so questions. All right, you have like 10 solid minutes to work on your practice in Schoology. So it's that green puzzle piece. And it's the 6 5 practice, not the exit ticket. You'll take that tomorrow. But the 6 5 practice is what you'll work on for practice.